Clayla Number two Clayla flew in yesterday last night and on the way the plane went back and said they were running out of fuel I have no idea so they eventually got here Okay, Apostle is Praise God, hallelujah. They say, put a mic in the pastor's hand and we can't let him go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Well, guys, we meet the latter stages of this thing. It looks like we're in a movie house now. Because it's a little bit dark out there. Cannot see anybody. So, uh, yeah, so it's a bit of a different situation. But, guys, do you think it's been worth it? We're trusting God for a miracle, signs and wonders to follow the preaching of His Word. Amen. A lot of word has gone out today, but there's also been a lot of consecration and dedication to God. God of declaration. I'm just going to take a very short time, there was just a thought that I felt I wanted to just share with you guys as we at a latter stage of this. I've heard the word authority come up a lot today, that we have authority, we walk in authority, and we have that authority. But I see very few believers actually exercise and use that authority. So I wanted just to take a couple of minutes to just quickly stir your faith and pull you to another level so that when we leave here, you can actually implement and use that authority that God has given us as believers, not only in our personal lives, but also for the world, for the world and for the nations. You know, one of the things that I've realized over time is that it's not about me. It's not about this. We tend to take the word and we tend to apply it to our own lives. I need to pray, uh, believe God for my rent. I need to pray, uh, believe God for food. I need to believe for my children. I need to pray for, uh, believe for my security. And so on and so forth. So I use my faith very often for me. But Paul, Paul made the statement, he says, no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. Therefore, he's a dead man walking. For those young people, zombies, you know zombies, dead men walking. You understand? Not that we are zombies, but we are dead men walking. It's no longer I that live, but it's Christ who lives in me. You see, I'm 100% sold out to Him. Everything I do is because I believe that's what He wants me to do. That's why you hear these guys that were up here, that they, they're listening to the Word of God. What is God instructing and telling them to do? Because that's critical and important. Because if we don't have that direction, why are we here? Why are we even in this room today? You see, so it's, it's got to do with starting to live a kingdom-focused life. A life that's after the things of the Lord. So, your faith and my faith should and must predominantly be used for the kingdom of God. And not for self. Why? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Right? So they already have a priority list for you. The kingdom of God first, and he will keep take care of you. Be anxious for nothing, every my prayer, supplication, good things, giving, make your request known unto me. And he, God, will supply all your needs to his riches and glory. Amen. Amen. And you have to do that. But today I wanted to just look at this word authority very quickly. I've in the time that, that I will do it. And that is, when we talk about authority, what does authority actually mean? Have you ever thought about that? A definition. What does authority mean? What authority means is I have the right to make a decision. I have the right to place and make or give orders. And yes, the worst part. I can enforce obedience to the orders and to the decisions. I can enforce obedience to
to the orders and the decisions that I've issued. That's authority. Now in the world there's two kinds of authority. The first one is godly, or, or let's rephrase that. There are structures and authority is attached to rank, position, and title. When you are a CEO of a company, or you're a military officer, or you're a, a traffic officer, or anything like that, you are given a position, a title, or rank. That gives you authority. You don't necessarily have to be a leader, but because you're in that position, you get the authority. And that authority, by the way, is protected by God. Because God is the ultimate authority. Amen. You might say to me, but Pastor Les, where does it say that? Romans 13, 1 and 2, that every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So when you see a structure like king, princes, governments, um, all these organizations and these positions, it is God that allows that authority to be there. And because that authority is there, that is worldly carnal authority. And you, according to God, has your subject to those. Even in the home, you've got authority structures that are God ordained. Some people kick against them, but they're there. Alright? I'm not yet to go through all of that because I've got a very little time to get through this. So you have to understand that you've got that authority. And all authority comes from God and is ordained by God. But here's the kicker. The kicker is this. If you are in one of those authority positions and you exercise authority out of that position, it comes an accountability as well. And as much as God has ordained that authority and God has put that authority or allows that authority to be in place, the people that fill those roles will be held accountable for how they have been, how they conducted themselves. So no CEO of a company, no governmental minister, no um, anybody in any kind of authority position is going to get away from it. Do you think that they're going to get away with it? No. They ain't. All right, can you give it back? Yes. Right. So those authorities, you're not going to, they're not going to get away with it. There's an accountability structure that comes with that. Now that authority, that structure, you're not going to get away from. That is there. It's in place. We have to honor it. And then in Scripture, I can give you the verses. The Bible says the reason that we have to comply to those and do those is for God's sake. For the Lord's sake. Because we show Him up. Now, in, um, again, in Timothy, the book of Timothy, book 1 and 1, chapter 2, whatever, and then also chapter 2, uh, book 2, chapter 4, it talks about two principles which I'll just drop with you. The one is your and my responsibility as Christians is to implement and respect that authority so that you and I can pray into those positions, okay, for God's sake. Ultimately, it's for you and my sake as well. But you show Him, God, worship and praise through doing that, okay? So that is a secular worldly authority structure. Man implemented all of those things even against God's will. They wanted structures that God did not want, but God allowed. Okay, now, the second part, the second stream, that's one leg. The second leg, that leg you can't rebel against, you can't really fight against, you can't do anything. It's not that authority that we're talking about when we talk about authority up here. There's a second stream of authority. The second stream of authority comes from a principle that Jesus, you know, I heard Ian quote the scripture earlier on when we were praying just before the meeting, Luke 10, verse 19. Behold, 
I give you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Listen to that. All power over the enemy. I even know Amanda speak about it when she was up here earlier. All the power. And that's not all is all, guys. Not some. The authority that you and I have, there is no devil in hell. The work that Jesus did upon the cross and what he accomplished afterwards is complete. Alright? You and I have full power and authority over the devil. So whatever he brings to, to bring destruction is upon you. I mean, I need to understand. You might say, but how is it possible that you and I get all that authority? If you don't read through the Gospels, you find that with God having all authority, all authority was given to Jesus first. That authority was given to him when he was on the cross. And he received that authority for one reason, one reason only. Was because of his obedience to the instructions of God. He did what God told him to do by going to the cross. And he fulfilled that call upon his life. And by doing that and fulfilling God's desires and purposes for him, he received all authority. So God delegated all authority to him. So in Romans 13, God had all authority. Now you see that he gave that authority to Jesus. Jesus in turn in Luke 10 gives that authority to you and I. But not all authority. Jesus was given all authority. We've not been given all authority. We've been given all authority over the devil. Okay? Not over secular stuff and not over one another. Okay? I don't have authority over you. You don't have authority over me. But together we've got authority over the devil. Okay? And you need to understand that principle. And that is the authority that you need to invoke from this very moment onwards. And you've got to understand when you're walking down that street and you see something that is not of God, injustice, um, anything that the devil is the author of, and it's quite easy to distinguish between the devil's work and God's work. Because the Bible says every perfect and good gift comes from the Father. So if it's not a perfect and good gift, you know this is devil's work. Alright? And you can then restrain, because the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Joel 4 7. He submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we see that authority that we have. That is the authority that we are saying to you guys, you need to walk in on a continuous basis. And whenever you see injustice or anything that is not from God, you take your authority and you enforce your authority over that thing. You with me? So, as a final word from my side tonight, I want to say to you, walk in the power and the might that God has given you. Alright? Do not hold back. We are fighting a fight for a, the heart of a nation, as you heard Brian say. Heart of a nation. South Africa is not going down, not while we are on watch. While we are around here, he ain't going nowhere. But my nation. Amen. Love you guys. Amen. All right, first announcement, very important. The food is closing in 20 minutes. Okay, so if you did not go and get your supper, sorry for you. All right. This is what's going to happen. I'm going to minister two minutes. I've got one thing to close with. And then we're going to praise. And you're welcome to leave whenever you want to. We'll probably praise for another half an hour and we will close the meeting directly after that. But this praise is very important because when you give, and people say, well, it's not spiritual. No, it's out of your soul. In other words, it's physically deciding to jump around and clap. Because you say, God, I'm giving you my any, everything, like David did, he danced before the Lord. It wasn't the Spirit of God came over him. He decided, I have my other skill. And so we are going to praise just for a few minutes. But I want to close with this. 
Jehoshaphat won that battle. And for 25 years, it was peace until he died. But the Bible says one thing was wrong in what Joshua did. In the peace time, he never took down the high places. Very often, like particularly because you're going to tell you, you've been through a battle and you just want to breathe up. So just give me peace. I just want peace. That peace time is when you should be taking down the high places. So don't think that we've got a lull with this COVID thing and everything else in our nation that it's rest time. It is war time, guys. It's time for us to take the high places down so that we do not have a repeat of what has ever happened before. So don't get stuck. So let's pray. Father, I pray right now for every seed that has gone out today. Lord, I thank you for the unity. I thank you for the oneness that has been in this place. Lord, I thank you right now that we are going to go with might and power and we are going to be consistent in everything that we do in Jesus' name. But Lord, right now, we just want to worship you. We want to praise you. We want to lift up your name. Lord, we say that you are wonderful. You are magnificent. Lord, we surrender our lives and say, Lord, use us. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, amen. amen and amen. All right, what we're going to do now is we're going to ask John in the back, please, we can't see you, so you stand up and do your thing, find a spot, move some chairs. And then I will, after about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I will be at the door to greet everybody. I want to thank you for coming out and spending this day with us. Amen. All right, let's stand and let's bruise.